I don't know about you, but um, as a father to young children, I really want the truth about COVID and, and kids. And um, th the reality is we actually don't know how many children are hospitalized right now in the U.S. because of COVID. Um, that's shocking information uh, to me to really find that out. But uh, once again, when I saw this week the news media reporting headlines like this, uh, CNN, uh, child COVID-19 hospitalizations reach a new high. Uh, Newsmax, uh, COVID hospitalizations for children increase five-fold. Uh, New York Times hospitalizations for children soar. Um, you know, I mean, it can be kind of scary, right? And so I, I, I looked at uh, the, the CDC data where uh, all the media was getting this from, and I thought, gosh, are, are kids really getting uh, more and more sick that they're just having to go to the hospital? Is that, is that in fact what's happening? And, uh, and this is what I found. Um, I, I went straight to uh, this week's uh, CDC uh, MMWR report. Okay, I'll have, I'll have links to all these sources on this post. And, um, and I, I, I read the paper, okay? Read the fine details. Here it is right here, okay? And so um, this is what they say in their limitations. And I actually like this study. Um, th they said children and adolescents meeting COVID net criteria with a positive SARS-CoV-2 test result, here's the key, might have been hospitalized primarily for reasons other than COVID-19, resulting in potential overestimations of hospitalization rate. Well, how can that be? Why, why would we be reporting, uh, you know, over-reporting kids that are in the hospital? And then why would the media be repeat, you know, be uh, saying that the hospitalizations are soaring? How could that happen in the United States, right? Well, I'll, I'll tell you the reason. I want you to go to Google and Google COVID net, okay? COVID net, it's the, it's the uh, kind of public health surveillance system that we're using to track COVID hospitalizations. And they don't actually count you as a COVID hospitalization if you actually get admitted to the hospital for COVID. That's not how it works. That, that's what a common sense person would think, uh, that if your admission diagnosis is you know, a respiratory issue and you have COVID and you confirm that, then you get counted, right? No, no, that, that's not how it works. Go to COVIDnet, don't take my word for it. Just go to COVIDnet, Google that, go to this. It's on the CDC's website right here and I'll just read straight from it. Once again, don't, don't take my word for it. Um, it says that a, um, um, a, a COVID net, uh, uh, COVID-19 associated hospitalization is a, um, here it is right here, sorry for that. If you are hospitalized within 14 days of a positive test result, okay, so how does this work? You get a swab, you're positive, uh, let's say you're asymptomatic, and then you get in a car crash a week later. That counts. That counts for all the children. That counts for what all the media is reporting right now. That counts toward it. And so what did they say? They were saying it increased fivefold. It went from 0.3 per 100,000 to 1.4 100,000. That means if you over-reported one case per 100,000 because of a positive test result, when you had no symptoms, no respiratory symptoms, and you were admitted to the hospital as a child, you got counted. And all of a sudden, we have a flurry of just mayhem in the media, which is scaring people, um, and, and it could be based on a complete lie. Now, I, I don't, you know, it, it, it's hard to know what the truth is. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's for sure an overestimation, uh, but common sense would tell you that it has to be an overestimation to some degree. It just really has to be. Now, finally, I want to point out one other thing since I'm, I'm on, this, uh, on this paper. Um, is they actually studied seven indicators for kids in the hospital with COVID. Okay, things like did they require a ventilator? Did they require um, special medicine or go to the ICU? Okay, and they were comparing Delta to the prior strains of COVID. Okay, and the big question, right, is hey, um, is Delta more serious for kids? Well, out of these seven indicators, only six, um, I, I'm sorry, six of them were not uh, statistically significant and only one was only one of those indicators was statistically significant and it actually favored Delta meaning that the median hospitalization for Delta for a kid uh, was two days versus the prior strains was three days so it actually improved under Delta so that the objective statistically significant evidence that was in this paper that the CDC reported actually showed Delta was less severe 
And yet the media, you see how the media picks up on that and, and they just say it's fivefold increase and hospitalizations are soaring, even though we actually don't know. So once again, I'm not trying to minimize COVID. I just want the truth and so should you. So let's go find it. Take care.